So the website Numbio came out with their mid-year 2021 list of countries with the best quality of life in the world. Now, I always take these lists with a little bit of a grain of salt, but actually in looking through the numbers, I found a number of tax-friendly countries with great quality of life scores, and I wanted to share those countries with you today. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson, the author of the book Nomad Capitalist and the founder of the company Nomad Capitalist, where for almost a decade we've been helping seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. Everything from lowering your taxes legally to getting a second passport to protect yourself to investing in higher probability markets overseas. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. And today I want to share with you the latest report. There are oh so many of these reports of the best places for expats, countries with the best quality of life. This one is from Numbio. It is the 2021 list of highest quality of life countries. And I'm often skeptical of these lists because they don't favor seven and eight figure or higher entrepreneurs and investors. They tend to favor people who have jobs, who are looking to buy houses and get mortgages, who have to sit in traffic and commute, and that's fine. That is obviously a large audience that gets a lot of publicity, but it doesn't speak to the nomad capitalist who has options. And so I'm often frustrated how great countries like a Singapore or even Malaysia next door, they can offer a great quality of life, have low taxation. You know, you can get a lot done and, and have a great life if you are a successful person, uh, are not well represented on these lists. And I get frustrated with you know, the Denmarks of the world uh, ranking so highly. Now, uh, spoiler alert, Switzerland came in number one, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Let's look at some of the legacy brand countries and where they ranked. The US ranked at number 16, Canada ranked at number 22, and the UK came in at number 23. So if you're from one of those countries and you are going around saying how our country is the best, not only do you not have the lowest taxes, not only do you have the best quality education, now you aren't the best place to live either, not even close in most of these cases. So let's start with number one, because I want to talk about the tax-friendly options where people actually want you to come to their country, or at least the countries want you to come to their country. Number one is Switzerland. And while Switzerland is, in my opinion, somewhat of a legacy brand, they still do a lot of things right in that they allow people to come. If you're very wealthy, you can pay a lump sum tax and you can maintain really the ultimate flexibility over your tax affairs with one uh, fixed payment, and then you go out and make the money that you're gonna make. Other European countries have taken this as they increasingly need to bring in money from foreigners coming to their country, but Switzerland was really one of the first. And so if you are not from Switzerland, then you can simply you know, move in and say, hey, I'm gonna pay this, this fixed amount. And so that remains relatively tax friendly if you are certainly in the uh, high net worth or perhaps even ultra high net worth category, not a bad place to go. And so it's certainly better than a place like Denmark, where not only would you not want to go there and pay more than half of your money to the government, but they really make it very difficult if you are just simply an investor who has some wealth and you don't happen to be from the European Union. It's a lot easier to go to a place like Switzerland than many of the other uh, Northern European or Central European uh, hotspots. Now, let's talk about uh, number nine. Probably doesn't apply to a lot of people, but New Zealand, ranked number nine, another perennial favorite on these lists, could be tax friendly for a certain type of ultra high net worth individual. If we go down to number 20, we look at Portugal. Portugal, very hot place right now in that they have the non-habitual resident tax program, the NHR. Now, I've described this as the Swiss cheese of tax exemptions. There is a lot of planning, especially if you're an American. There are certain things that don't qualify. If you've got an offshore company, you may need to move it. If you have certain types of income, you may need to change it. If you've got a business somewhere else, you need to make sure that you're not um, triggering Portugal's rules. There's a lot of things that you want to take into account. As with all things Europe, Portugal is more complicated. It is not as simple as moving to a quote unquote tax haven or a territorial tax country or a, any kind of tax friendly country. But Portugal can become tax friendly, especially for cryptocurrency, for Bitcoin investors. They have a good framework for that, at least right now. And so number 20 on best places to live, it is in the same realm as the United States. A lot of Americans are now considering going to Portugal, whether it's just for the uh, the golden visa program where they're actually physically moving to Portugal and buying real estate and moving in and taking advantage of the great quality of life. Um, I think that Portugal, quite frankly, it deserves to rank among the US and Canada and the UK, even though it is not among the wealthiest of the EU countries. I think it is a place that a lot of people should look at. Uh, number 23, the UK. Not a great place if you're from the UK, but again, if you're coming in as a foreigner, there are some certain tax exemptions that you can uh, qualify for, and so you can really have control over how much tax that you pay, uh, at least for you know about two decades. And so 
obviously with some of these European countries, there is always a risk in the countries where uh, they want, you know, certain politicians want to come in and tax the rich, that some of these tax exemptions could be, um, you know, taken away in the future. But for now, the UK is a place where if you're coming inward, uh, could be some tax exemptions for you there. They rank number 23. Now, if you're in the UK and you're British, then you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I don't get these deals, so why don't I move to Portugal and get the deals and work towards getting that EU passport back? Uh, so obviously there's a different situation for everybody. Number 24 is where we start with the tax-free countries, and that's the UAE. Now, here's the interesting thing about the UAE. Home, of course, to Dubai, Abu Dhabi. They score lower on purchasing power, theoretically because the people who are there, on average, have less purchasing power than someone in Switzerland. But they score not only higher than Switzerland and other countries on safety, they score higher than every other country above them. The top 23 countries, the safety score in the UAE is higher. So Switzerland, Denmark, uh, all these countries, you know, the U.S., forget it, they were like at the bottom. But uh, UAE beat them all in terms of the safety score. What they also, what the UAE also lost points for was commute. Um, and so that's why, those are two of the big reasons why it ranked down at number 24. Now, the UAE, of course, is a tax-free country. People point out they have a VAT. Okay, the U.S. has sales tax. European countries have VAT. Lots of countries have GSTs, VATs, whatever. Uh, but by and large, personal, corporate can be entirely tax-free in the UAE. You can buy property. You can start a company to get a residence permit. So there's a lot of accessibility there. It's a cosmopolitan place to live. It's a safe place to live. And really, it dispels, in terms of my perspective, all the quality of life arguments that people have when they criticize us for talking about the Georgias and the Montenegros and the Colombias and the Mexicos and the Malaysias. Oh, you know, you wouldn't want to live there. Now, I happen to find living in those places in, within certain conditions uh, very enjoyable, very safe. I really have a great time there, but if you want that, you know, more cosmopolitan experience, if you want that highly international experience, you're going to find it in Dubai. You can get it at a price lower than Switzerland and with more safety than Switzerland, according to the people who keep the numbers. So number 24 was the UAE. Number 27, Qatar, probably not one most people are going to consider. However, similar safety, same part of the world. If you're looking for something a little bit less... Uh, uh, over the top, perhaps you want something more subdued. Uh, Qatar, a bit more difficult to get into. Number 28, Ireland, another country where if you are incoming, we have certainly sent some of the people we've helped into Ireland, but they can take advantage of very flexible tax arrangements as new residents with some conditions to meet, but that can be very tax friendly for them. If you're Irish, again, you have to ask, do I want to stay in a country that's number 28 when I could just move to Portugal at number 20 as an EU citizen and start claiming a lot of tax benefits? Or I could move to somewhere else, UAE, right? So I think this, these lists put into perspective where your country is in the pecking order, what kind of countries you're surrounded by, and it really shows that you can have a great quality of life in a lot of places that you may have not considered. Number 32, Singapore. Now, why Singapore, which generally scores pretty well on these lists, and it's one of the ones that I point to and say, okay, they haven't entirely lost their marbles. High housing costs in Singapore, one of the highest, if not the highest ratios of housing price to income. Uh, is why Singapore scored so low. I, mean, I think that definitely knocked them down a few pegs. You've got a country, now pollution was also a little bit of an issue, although people have certainly been moving from further north in Asia down to Singapore to avoid some of the pollution issues coming out of China. But uh, Singapore, great quality of life. Who can debate that? Uh, good taxation, not quite as straightforward as the UAE, but good levels of taxation. Things work. People speak English, if that's your primary language. And so really hard to believe they scored so low, but nevertheless, good place on the list. And by the way, from uh, the first, you know, 30-some, they weren't that far apart. Um, so what, where we really start to get down, number 33 was Cyprus. Again, you can move there. Good tax regime if you're coming in. Pretty minimal taxes. Relatively affordable place to live. A little bit off the radar if you want something that is not where everyone else is going. Uh, Cyprus can be definitely a good option where you can control your taxes very flexibly. Where we start to see drops is down to number 37, Italy. You see like a big chunk there in the mid-30s. Big chunk was lost. Number 37, Italy. Number 41, Puerto Rico. They're calling that a, a separate country. So if you're an American looking to go to Puerto Rico for tax benefits, you are, you are losing a chunk. 
Um, now again, Puerto Rico didn't score as well in safety, but if you're living in some of the really nice areas and you're keeping yourself in those areas, it's a whole different picture. Same as if you're living in the US, yeah, they say Chicago or New Orleans or wherever has terrible, Baltimore has terrible crime. You live in a suburb of Baltimore, you know, 30 minutes away, which is probably where a lot of people watching this would be living. You don't have the same issues and you can do the same in Puerto Rico, you can do the same anywhere. You know, Singapore is uh, basically that experience in the entire country. But, you know, Italy, 37, they have a, uh, a new uh, tax program where they've been encouraging foreigners to come in and pay one low amount of tax. Puerto Rico, obviously, catering to Americans with 0% and 4% tax rates, whether you're an individual investor, whether you're running a business um, and exporting services. So that's where it gets down to. And then from there, you have the Georges, you have the Malaysias. Those are not that much lower. Again, I would argue with some of the criteria for those that those countries should be better ranked for seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors. Uh, but you have some places that are beating, perhaps where you come from. You have some that are not that much lower. And quite frankly, I think that you can create a great quality of life anywhere if you have the resources to do it. If you have a location independent business, location independent trading, location independent wealth, you can afford to go to a Cyprus. It scores a few points lower, but you can buy yourself a great villa. You've got a beautiful view. You've got a nice culture. I've been there. Uh, there's nowhere I've been in Cyprus uh, where I felt unsafe. Uh, and so definitely a lot of opportunities out there. That is the list of best quality of life. If there's the one that stands out to you, I want you to leave a comment below so we can talk more about that country. So people ask, Andrew, how do I get the most out of Nomad Capitalist? How do I begin my Nomad Capitalist journey? The first thing people do is they start right where you're at. They watch YouTube, they listen to podcasts, they read articles at nomadcapitalist.com. We've spent years creating thousands of pieces of free content so that you can get the vibe from someone who's actually done this, from someone who's actually been in your shoes. What they'll do next, they'll get a copy of the book. You can find it on Amazon. It costs a few bucks, and while it's not gonna give you all the secrets, it's gonna, again, give you more of the vibe. You're gonna learn a lot of the things that I've learned. You're gonna learn some strategies you can employ, and you're gonna get a lot further in your journey. From there, if you are the seven or eight figure entrepreneur investor, you can go to nomadcapitalist.com. You can click become a client. We're pretty busy these days but we have availability to help a limited number of people who want to create a holistic plan, something that I think is so important. So if you want to do that, go to nomadcapitalist.com, click become a client, learn more about how it works and how we can help you.